Hi everyone and welcome to this episode. Uh, today we are talking about the 2024 AP Chemistry exam and specifically whether or not it was as advertised, so to speak. Uh, some of you probably saw my video a couple weeks ago where I did a review unit on Unit 3, Intermolecular Forces and Properties. And um, in it, I mentioned what the College Board tells us, that Unit 3 uh, typically makes up 18 to 22% of the AP exam. Okay, and the AP exam took place on May 7th of this week. And um, the comments that I got for that video on social media and also from my in-person students was, where were the intermolecular forces? I didn't do any intermolecular forces and I didn't see them and what's going on. And the other comment that I got a lot was, hey, there was a lot of thermo on this exam. And I wasn't expecting quite as much thermo as there was on the exam. And so I, it got me to thinking, you know, maybe I should check into this and just see what's going on. Today around noon, uh, our time, the FRQs were made public. And so I immediately downloaded them, sent them to the copier a couple of times because, you know, copiers. And I decided to take a look at the distribution of questions. And um, so I'm going to start my video with this, and then we'll kind of summarize and see where we landed in terms of the percentages of the questions that landed on each unit. So just a quick uh, review, unit three, which was kind of the, the focal point of a lot of the comments, starts with intermolecular forces, those London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, uh, ion-dipole, and hydrogen bonding forces, and others. And um, we start there, and then we move into things like solids, liquids and gases. We talk about the ideal gas law, how some gases deviate from ideal gas law, uh, kinetic theory, and the, the, the list kind of gets varied after a while. Uh, solutions, making solutions, uh, separations of solutions and mixtures chromatography, solubility, spectroscopy, photoelectric effect, and the Beer-Lambert law. If you would like more detail on any of those, you can go back and check out my other video uh, from a couple of weeks ago on Unit 3 AP Chem. But that's kind of, that's the outline of Unit 3, which we are told in the College Board curriculum is 18 to 22% of the exam. So let's see where we landed. Okay, so a couple of quick things um, about the FRQs. I am not showing the actual FRQs um, just because I don't want to do any kind of copyright infringement. Um, the College Board owns those and that's fine. So what I did was I looked through the FRQs and I made a list kind of identifying the skill or the task that was being asked for. So for example, in 1A, you had to identify from a photo the acidic proton. Okay, and that's, and that's great. I won't reproduce the question. A uh, couple of caveats here. Um, I'm making this judgment call based only on the FRQs. I do not have access to the MCQs and probably will never have access to those uh, unless they're published at some point. Uh, and even if they are, they might be mixed in with other years. And so it's really almost impossible to know what MCQs were on that exam unless you took it. So you know better than I do. Um, so I'm only going on 46 points out of the total 106 points on the exam. So this is a small you know, snapshot of things. And so I only have the FRQs to go on. Um, the actual percentages may be different based on those MCQs. But according to F FRQ number one, we were asked to identify the acidic proton, calculate the molarity of a solution, and in these parentheses over here, I identified as close as possible the unit and subtopic that each one represents. So that was at 8.6, molarity is in 3.7, there's our unit three right there, um, 8.7, 8.9, um, draw an X on a graph for a titration to show where the ratio would be where it should be, um, justify your answer, that was another point a new titration curve, um, you had to sketch another one on top of the one that was there based on a change that was that was made. And that's, again, a chap, unit eight. And then we get into some thermo, uh, calculating Q for uh, some process, calculating the molar enthalpy of reaction, the effect of heat loss on calculation. So we're looking, we ended up in unit six on FRQ number one. I'm just going to run through these really quickly uh, because, again, I don't have the actual questions reproduced uh, for the public here. So in FRQ number two, the long FRQs, we're calculating grams of CO2 produced, that's, stoic, that's moles 
in grams as unit 1.1 right at the beginning. Calculating the volume, the effective, uh, that's unit three. Effective particle size on surface area, the effective surface area on reaction rate, and the effective surface area on the volume of gas produced. So a couple of unit fives and a unit four that happened to be there. We had to identify the limiting reactant, and that was unit four. And then they threw in an entropy question. No problem. We studied entropy, and that's unit nine, thermodynamic favorability. Is this reaction going to go? And if so, what can we, what can we say about it? Um, then we calculated the pKa from Ka, and we calculated the ratio and a buffer again, so then we're back to unit 8. So a nice little smattering of questions. Nothing, nothing surprising there, just, you know, it's, it's exciting to see which order they get put in. And in FRQ number 3, so we start with oxidation numbers. That's unit 4.9 um, on chemical reactions. Here's another unit 3, alloy types. And what I'm, what I'm trying to show here is that, yes, um, the intermolecular forces is the title of the unit, but there's also other things in there. So let's just keep that in mind. Atomic radius comparison, calculating moles, net ionic equation and half reactions. That's sort of our last unit on galvanic cells and things. Um, calculating cell potential and cell spontaneity. This turned out to be an electrolytic cell, which is totally fine. And they added us, they had us calculate the time to electroplate a certain amount of rhodium, which was pretty awesome don't often see rhodium, which is kind of nice. And then we get into the short FRQs, significant digits on the thermometer. That was just, that was kind of like just like a general laboratory technique type of situation. I assigned it 1.1, um, even though it's almost like one of those assumed things. When you enter your second year of chemistry and take AP Chem, they're assuming you know how to take measurements on an instrument with the appropriate number of sig digs. So you always want to take whatever digits are given to you by your measurement and add one, which is an estimate. That top of the thermometer was actually between the lines. And so you had to like estimate between the lines. So hopefully you did that. Um, I'm sure you did that because you're all awesome. <clears throat> and there you go. Movement of particles at higher temperatures. So you had to draw some arrows to show that it was increasing in temperature and kinetic energy. Um, those arrows should have been longer, I think. Calculate the specific heat capacity. There's thermo again. Everybody was saying, why is there so much thermo on this exam? Comparing change in temperature between experiments, and I assigned that unit 6.3. So that was FRQ number four. Uh, FRQ number five was pretty much all equilibrium. We lived in unit seven during that time, and so we have the equilibrium constant expression, a particle drawing for Q showing the ratio of their products to reactants, and a couple of Le Chatelier's principal questions dealing with change in volume and change in concentration. So I assigned those parts of unit seven. FRQ number six, calculating, this is more of a kinetics thing, but also a Lewis structure thing. So we start with uh, kinetics, predicting the order of reaction, calculating the rate of reaction. And then um, in the second half, they said, okay, well, here's two related structures. Let's finish one of them. And then let's talk about the bond angles. Would be, they be the same or different? A very typical question appears on lots and lots of exams, uh, but that is unit two, so I assigned those there. And look at this, we're off to our last FRQ. Again, I'm not doing any of these in detail. Um, I'm looking for general overall trends. Unit seven, FRQ number seven was actually all unit three. Preparing a solution, preparing another solution, and doing some chromatography. And so you might be surprised by that. So let's just jump right into some overall stats. I did these on a little spreadsheet this afternoon after taking a look at the FRQs, and this is what I found, okay? So I made a spreadsheet, AP units one through nine. This is the predicted percentage that the College Board tells us that it's going to be. So most of them are seven through nine percent. They give us, they give a little leeway depending on the exact number of questions, but they say it's about seven to nine. I, I estimate eight for each one. The two biggies are unit three, 18 to 22%, and unit eight, 11 to 15%, which is assets, bases, buffers. That makes sense. Okay. And um, and that was the, the biggest one there. So the number of questions that I, there were 42 prompts on the FRQs that I saw. And I counted and I, I assigned them to each of the units. And each of the units is represented here. So that's what they tell us they're going to do. 
to varying degrees. And then I, I calculated a percent of the total. So of the total 42 prompts, what percent turned out to be each unit? And I thought it was interesting because unit three, which is what everybody was kind of getting excited about, happened to be a little low, but it was still 16.7% when you added in all of the, the other the questions. Um, and a lot of them were fairly low, just under 10. Um, unit nine was, I think, a little bit high. It turned out to be more overrepresented than I would have expected, but that's okay. Sometimes they throw in some electrochem and you just, you got to do it and it's a little bit extra. Um, acids, bases, buffers turned out to be a little, a little high. And then, so I don't know exactly what the point totals are going to be. I, I can kind of guess there's 42 questions and 46 points possible. So four of those are two point questions. And I kind of guessed as to which ones I thought were going to be two point questions is the one where you have to justify your answer and things. So this is kind of a guess right here. But when I did that, I found that according to my little method here, which probably flawed, just so you know, um, turns out to be just under 18% for unit three in terms of the number of points that are possible, according to the FRQ. And that may be surprising to you. And, and you'd be forgiven for thinking, wow, there wasn't much inf intermolecular forces on there. Um, and what I wanted to kind of focus on is that, yeah, there probably wasn't, at least on the FRQ, tons of, there wasn't tons of questions about, okay, which one has London dispersion, which one has dipole dipole, which one has hydrogen bonding or whatever. But a lot of the questions are grouped in unit three because they deal with phenomena that are because of intermolecular forces, like things dissolve in water and make solutions because of ion dipole forces. So in lurking in the background, there's that sort of knowledge of ion dipole forces or chromatography where the molecules that are more similar to the, the mobile phase actually move further than the molecules that are less similar to the mobile phase. Again, it, it depends on their intermolecular forces and it wasn't specifically stated in the question, but it was kind of in that unit because that's a phenomena that makes use of or is there because of intermolecular forces. So if you were looking for those questions, you didn't see them, but you did see an ideal gas law question and you did see some other ones. So I was, I was actually surprised based on the comments that I saw that it was this close. Um, but now that I saw the FRQs, I thought, okay, that's the, this is a little more accurate. I was surprised um, a little bit that the thermo was actually a little bit high. Um, according to my rough calculations, we estimated about 8%, 7 to 9. I got over a little over 12% of the questions being thermo, which was, you know, bumped up there a little bit. So if you thought there was more thermo than you expected, then you were, you were right. So great, good job on that. A little bit more acid base, a little bit um, more on the entropy as well as the galvanic cells. A couple of them are a little low, and I guess that's expected. Again, I don't have the MCQs to balance this, so it could have been right in the range. I just don't know that. But because of the comments that were posted and were floating around on social media and Reddit and all those places, uh, a lot of people commenting, where's the IMFs? Where is the intermolecular forces? And why is there so much thermo? Um, I thought it was worth taking a look. And while you um, may like the result or may not like the result, this is what I came up with. Um, I appreciate any comments that you would like to throw in that direction, whether you agree or disagree, um, but that is what I came up with. So in my estimation, the AP chemistry exam was fairly close to being as advertised. I suppose there's a little bit of variability here or there. Um, and one might argue that one question was a little bit different than in a different category than what I put it. Um, but I feel pretty confident in my results. Feel free to um, make your own opinions about that. But there you go. That's the 2024 AP Chemistry exam and a little bit of the postmortem after the exam. Um, and we'll be doing some more of that. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or send them to me directly. In the meantime, uh, have a happy end of the year now that you've completed your AP chemistry exam. And in the meantime, happy studying and have a great day.